So good morning. My name is Fiona Lees, um, Chief Executive of East Ayrshire Council, and I'm delighted to have been asked to join you at this APSI event, shining a light on the performance of public services. There's never been a more important time. This might be a global pandemic, but everything about its impact and the response is to be found locally within our communities. When I cast my mind back to March when the Council set its budget, that seems a lifetime ago. But at that time, we were making provision for COVID and we were all reaching for our business continuity plans. But instinctively, we knew we had a different starting point. We knew our starting point was out in our local communities. And before lockdown, we had been working with our local communities with over 100 local community resilience groups established. Around 400 volunteers were active and ready to respond. Our third sector was right beside us and our business community were offering their premises, vehicles, plant, and in many cases, PPE, which was in short supply in those early days. In the first 48 hours, we undertook a survey of our entire workforce here at the Council um, in excess of 6,200 colleagues because we needed to know who we needed to identify and protect people who might have underlying medical conditions. We needed to identify people who could stay at home and who could work there. And also, we needed to identify those colleagues who would be able to take on additional roles as we staffed up to deliver mission critical services. As I cast my mind back now in those early days, um, there are three things that I think enabled us uh, to respond so quickly. And that was the relationship we have with our communities, the strength of our teams, and the power of our partnership working. So I'm going to take each one of those in turn and tell you a little bit more about. And the first one I want to turn to is our vibrant and strong communities we have here in East Ayrshire. Um, we work in a, in a different way with our communities. Um, we work alongside people, we work with them, uh, we don't do things to them or um, for them. It is a relationship that is built on trust, it focuses on the things that make people strong and um, local talents and it sees a demonstrable shift uh, towards early intervention and um, prevention. Our work is focused on community-led regeneration and action and us working in support of that. All of our communities have hopes and dreams and nearly all of ours have turned those into local action plans for the future. We must have now um, disposed of over 50 assets to our local community and they deliver their own services. And many of these assets have become hubs for the local community during lockdown and its subsequent phases. Our conversations with communities were around what could they do and what did they need us to do? So together we've worked in a joint endeavour. And maybe just to give you some of the examples that we've been working on, I'm sure they resonate with many colleagues um, joining us at this event. Food has been a huge issue and we have seen hunger in our communities um, at levels that um, have, have, shocked, have shocked us. In the course of lockdown, we have delivered, uh, we've cooked and delivered for pickup over 650,000 meals. Our entire focus has been on food first. And in that way, we have been able to make our pound go much further. So we've extended the eligibility um, for local food to anybody who needed it. We've served an extra 2,000 2, children over and above what we might have been expected to do. We've also been in circumstances where we couldn't really give out cash or vouchers because in many of our small villages, then there would have been a cost to getting that food for people. And in doing this, we've kept a lot of our suppliers in business. We currently um, support uh, about 53% of our spend for 30 or, or 1,000 meals a week um, is spend local. And that's very much part of our approach to community wealth building. And that's something we've been able to build upon. At the same time, we have been establishing more community larders. So going forward from here, we want to see a reduction in food banks and a development of our dignified food provision. 
We've had 1,400 volunteers regularly working in their local communities. And they've been helping us keep safe over 5,000 people who've been shielding and doing lots of practical jobs, you know, shopping, getting medication for people, dog walking, or just importantly, keeping in touch and making those befriending and check calls. And now we've flipped that support, so we're able to extend it to provide uh, important support to people who really need to self-isolate if we are going to keep infection levels down. As we've escalated into level four just last week, uh, colleagues, then our communities have joined us in the important social marketing and messaging campaign that we've been undertaking. So we drive down infection levels, cases, um, and positivity levels, and we try to support our communities as best we can. At a time when we've all been told to stay at home, then place has never been more important. And communities will be front and centre of our response, our recovery and our renewal. So next up, I want to talk about the strength of our teams. And coincidentally, just before lockdown, all 6,000 of our staff had been through our immersive FACE experience. Now, FACE stands for Flexible, Approachable, Caring and Empowered. And those are the qualities and behaviours our colleagues told us that they thought they needed to have in order to be the face of East Ayrshire, in order to be so well placed, uh, they could respond to uh, serving our local community. And those qualities and attributes have never been more evident in our response and nor have they been more needed. Our teams have felt empowered to do the right thing. That's the message we've given them. Go out, see what needs to be done, keep yourself safe, and do what you think is the right thing, and we've got your back. Earlier approaches that we've taken to have self-empowered teams have um, really served us very well. We piloted this in one area of our business, and it will be familiar to um, a large group in the, the audience today, and that's outdoor amenities and our um, cemetery service. Our outside environment has never been uh, more important to us than now. And 18 months ago, in response to our workforce and their views about what, how we needed to change, they felt they could take their own decisions about what needed to be done in consultation with our local communities. And that's exactly what we've got, self-managed teams. And we've really seen that uh, be an enormous strength in our response. And we're now looking at how we can apply that across other services and grow that approach as we are also looking at how we can blur roles and do the things that need to be done in communities, again, so we are best placed to serve. Like every other uh, colleague presenting to you today, we've done things at speed. And again, staff have felt able to take decisions and just to get things moving. We built a telephony centre within 72 hours. Some of our schools became well-being hubs overnight providing essential childcare for key workers. And now, you know, we see the potential for all schools to be wellbeing hubs as we redesign children's services moving forward. Our schools sit at the heart of communities and that's where we need to put all of our support. So they are best placed to reach out and to support the communities they serve. We rapidly redesigned our public protection services, recognising that for, for some, home is not uh, a safe place. And we streamlined all of our business services as well, making sure that um, where money needed to be got out to businesses, we did that fast. And where groups, where companies didn't apply uh, for money, then we were talking to them about what kind of help we could give them. And as we rolled out wellbeing messages to the community, and access to wellbeing support, we recognised that our staff needed that too. Because it's a, it's a much used expression, um, but this, this isn't a, a sprint, this is very much um, a marathon. And people need to look after themselves if they're going to be able to look after other people. So that's been our big message to our, our colleagues. 
Talk to yourself as if you would talk as if you were talking to your best friend and keep yourself um, safe. So ultimately, um, this takes me on to the last point I wanted to share with you is about um, the local leadership of um, change. And clearly, we've been in a position where we have relied significantly on the work with our partners. And work with partners moves at the speed of trust. And we were able to move really quickly because we have a strength and a depth to our partnership um, working. And I say that to you as um, we are now, as I address you, we are now sitting at um, protection uh, level four. Um, we have high levels of cases and we need to bring down the infection um, level and keep our communities safe. So we recognise the stage we are at and that needs a, a concerted effort again from our communities and from our partners. We're all in a position where we now know of somebody who's been affected by COVID and people who've lost and people are going to need a chance to recover, to tell their stories and they're going to need time to heal as, as well. But this is also a time for renewal colleagues and that is the lens we are looking through to. And in all of this, as different levels of government point to the power of communities, whether it's the Scottish government or it's the uh, UK government, then the closest sphere uh, of government to local communities is local, is local government. And this is a time for local government to work so closely um, with the communities we serve. So we take the opportunity to reset relationships, that we focus on the things that are important to us. COVID has, called, has caused us all to assess that. And we make sure that the things that really matter are the things that we keep doing. So the services that are going to add to the social and the economic health of our communities. And we stop doing the things that have not had the impact that, um, that they should have. I've had the opportunity to spend time in communities throughout Scotland, listening to people's experiences, listening to what's changed for them and what has worked, and talking to people about what a good life looks like. And that's what we need to build upon going forward. Colleagues, this is not a race back to normal. This is a time for change. Those who we serve and those who have served us deserve that, and they should receive no less. Thank you.